Number 27. Using the Bohr model, determine the energy in joules of a photon produced when an electron in a Li2 plus ion moves from the orbit with n equals 2 to the orbit with n equals 1. So we did a very similar problem like this in number 26. So if this is the first time that you're here, go back to number 26. It's just one click away if you're on the playlist um, to get a more in-depth explanation. This one will kind of be the quick hand version because we already went over everything uh, last question. But anyway, let's draw the atom. <laughs> so here I have a nucleus, right? I like to shade in my nucleus just to show. And it says that it's moving an electron is moving from n equals 2, so that's the second shell out of the nucleus, to the first shell. So here I have two circles, 1 and 2. So the first one would be n equals 2. Uh, actually, the first one would be n equals 1, right? Duh. And the second one would be n equals 2. Okay. So it's telling us that the electron is moving from n equals 2 to n equals 1. So it'd be in here. We just have to find the energy of that jump. Now, I said the key word. These are jumping shells, right? You're going from one shell, one principal quantum number, to the other principal quantum number. So you might think of the equation change in energy equals k, 1 over n squared 1 minus 1 over n squared 2. But unfortunately, we can't use this. It's not that simple, right? We can't just plug in two for this and one for this or vice versa because this equation and star this, do whatever, this equation is only for hydrogen because hydrogen's nuclear charge is one. So that's accounted for in this equation. However, we have lithium. So we have to find a different way to get to this answer. So unfortunately, this is not the right way. We have to erase it. But what else do we know that's part of the Bohr model way of thinking? Well, this lithium was 2 plus, right? So that means that it lost 2 electrons. And it had 3 to begin with because there was a 3 for the atomic number. So this is hydrogen-like, they call it. It looks very similar to hydrogen because they both have one electron. So I can use the other equations that I know that is, you know, sewn in into the Bohr model. So all I would have to do basically is find out the change in energy from the two shells, right? I would have to find the energy of the final shell minus the energy that was in the initial shell, right? That's how a change is always uh, found out. It's always final minus initial. So I can say that my energy, my change in energy, could be the energy found in the shell of the first shell minus the second shell energy, right? Because n equals 1 was the final, and n equals 2 is the initial. So all I got to do is just find out these. And this is linked with n equals 1, and this is linked with n equals n equals 2. So I just have to do two different formulas and then put them together. So now the equation that's coming up is E, actually I'll put it over here, E to the n equals negative k z squared over n squared. And if you thought of this formula, you are absolutely right. k is that constant number, right? It's the Rydberg constant, which is always 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. The Z is the nuclear charge. So we should find out what the Z is for lithium. The nuclear charge is always going to be the charge of the nucleus. And the nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. The neutrons have no charge. So the nuclear charge is just the same thing as the number of protons. And if the atomic number was 3 for... For lithium, that means that it had three protons. So the Z for lithium would be a plus three every single time. And then the last step of this problem is the N, right? Now it's going to change because we have to do it for N equals one and N equals two. So we got to do two separate formulas. So let's get to it. Let's do the first one for N equals one. So E to the N 
So e to the first equals negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times our z was 3, a plus 3, I'll put that there, squared, all over, for this one, it would be 1 squared. 1 squared is just 1, so anything divided by 1 is the same number. And 3 squared is the same thing as 3 times 3, which is 9. So this one, e to the n, well, not e to the n, but the energy of the first shell would be negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18 times 9. So I get negative 1.96, we'll go with, times 10 to the negative 17th joules. Okay, we got the first part. Now we have to figure out the second part. So I just got to do the same formula again, but instead of the 1, I just put a 2 there. So en equals negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th times plus 3 squared all over... 2 squared. So, same thing as before, 3 squared is 9, so you just times it by 9, and 2 squared is the same thing as 4, because 2 times 2 is 4, so I'll just times by 9 and divide by 4 when I do this calculation. So, the energy of the second shell is negative 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18 times 9 divided by 4. And I get negative 4.90 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Now we're ready to find that change in energy. So I will put it up top here. The change in energy is the final one, which was the first one. So negative 1.96 times 10 to the negative 17th joules. Yeah. Minus... The second one, which was a negative 4.90 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. And when I subtract those two, negative 1.796 times 10 to the negative 17th minus negative 4.90 times 10 to the negative 18th, I get negative 1.47 times 10 to the negative 17th joules. And that's the change in energy for this problem. However, that's not the answer. <laughs> it is, but not really. Remember, the calculator does not understand theory. The calculator will only just do the math for you, but you have to understand the uh, theory behind the numbers. This negative just means that the energy was released. And that's always the case. If you're going closer and closer and closer to the nucleus, you will always release energy. So your number will always be a negative. And then vice versa. If you're going farther and farther and farther away, you'll always absorb energy. So your answer will always be positive. However, if you box this answer off with the negative in it, right, if you box the whole thing off, that would actually be incorrect because they just want to know how much energy was produced, right? So they didn't care about whether the energy was absorbed or released. They just wanted to know how much energy was produced. Well, 1.47 times 10 to the negative 17th joules were produced, but it was released because of that negative number. So that would be the answer, just the positive of what you got. The negative is just for context, all right? So by giving the answer 1.47 times 10 to the negative 17 joules, that would be the answer. The negative is just telling you that it's being released instead of absorbed. Oof. So this one was fun. What did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. If this helped, give it a like. And click subscribe if you want our questions to come into your feed. We, we put out questions daily, so that's always a good thing. We're here to help you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your continued support. I will see you guys in number 28. Bye-bye.